what we got. What are your thoughts overall, just on, on your defensive performance with this team after looking at the film? In the SC game? Yeah. I thought they did a nice job. Obviously, you're challenged a little bit with the scheme that they have because um, they spread you out. Um, but I thought our defense um, overall did a, did a good job. Of, you know, you, you got some explosive players. Um, Gary Bryan Jr. was a really good player. Uh, Taj Washington. Um, but uh, I thought overall um, our defense, we put them in a couple of – Precarious situations early, um, but I thought they responded. You know, the Q Lake interception I think was a really big deal for us in that game, kind of stemming the tide and getting us back on track offensively. But um, I was pleased with them. How, how have you seen Otito grow as a leader in the four years that you've had? Almost four, four years that you've had. Yeah, um, just a great young man. Obviously, a really good student, graduated early with an undergrad degree, and already enrolled in grad school. Um, but as he just you know, that, that maturation process, came here as a football track guy um, and was excelled at track. You know, I think, um, you know, went to the junior Pan Am games and really did well down there. I think he's an All-American as a freshman and a shot putter. So he's doing a lot of different things. Um, but now that I think he's 100% in football, he's um, really invested and I think his leadership skills, I think the players really understand because um, part of leading is first is just leading by example. You know, and they see the job not only that he does in the weight room on the practice field, but in the classroom, um, everything. You know, he's everything you want in a student athlete. So um, he doesn't, he's not an overly vociferous kid, but when he talks, everybody listens because they know he's got something, he's a, he's a guy of substance and when he says something, he means something. So um, he's done a really nice job and you can tell how much uh, our players gravitate to him because he does things the right way all the time. How do you describe kind of his work ethic on the field and in terms of honing his craft and technique? Yeah, he's really dialed into that. Um, wants to be great. Um, he wants to be great in everything he does. He wants to be great in the classroom. He wants to be great um, on the football field. Uh, he wants to be great in the kitchen. Uh, he's, a heck, he's a heck of a cook, you know, from what everybody talks about. So um, I think he just takes everything really seriously and really wants to perfect it. So um, it shows and you watch his work ethic and his attention to detail, um, especially up here in practice sessions. It, it, it rubs you off. I mean, he's really grown into that leadership role. Have you eaten anything you did? He has some, uh, he usually brings in snacks for the trainers. He's smart because the guys who take care of him the most, um, he takes care of our training pretty good. So I've had some of his uh, desserts, but I've not had a sit down. On the topic of food, um, is the team planning on getting together and having a thing? Yeah, well, one dinner? of the things that's unique about this place because everybody's local, most of our kids will go home. Um, some of them will take some of their teammates with them. So we're just trying to get a number right now of who we're going to have a team meal with. Um, but it's important for our kids. We, we usually we will practice earlier on Thursday. Um, and then let our kids, especially the local kids, get a chance to go home and spend Thanksgiving with their family. And a lot of them bring their uh, teammates home with them. But for, um, who's ever still around on campus, and we'll have a meal for those guys. You guys obviously had a game plan defensively to get uh, at the quarterback, you know, get in the backfield. But did mm -hmm. you figure that, did you expect to be as successful as you were? I think you had 10 tackles for a loss, two sacks. I mean, it, you don't know how any game's going to plan out going into it. Like, you don't go into a game saying, I think we got 10 sacks on us, you know. Really depends on how the game expresses itself as the course of time. But you know, we knew uh, it was a young quarterback and a very talented quarterback. Um, but we had to disrupt the timing. We had to disrupt the timing in that offense. That's the one thing about playing the right offense is, it, is if you can disrupt the timing, get the quarterback off his launch point, um, disrupt the receivers a little bit, uh, make the quarterback hold the ball a little bit longer, so then the rush can get home. Um, and I think our guys accomplished that. That's what our plan was going in. Um, the exact numbers that it turned out to be, uh, we couldn't. We don't predict that part of it, but we we knew really we had to affect the timing of that offense. You're closing in, you're getting close to the end of year four of a five-year contract. Mm -hmm. Your agent working on an extension for you? Yeah, my agent handles everything, so I, I don't worry about it. I'm just, my day-to-day -day is getting ready for Cal. You know, we always talk about mental toughness is the ability um, to move on to the next most important thing, and the next most important thing for us is playing Cal, a good Cal team that played really well against Stanford, you know, so that that's all of our attention is on that, that other stuff. Uh, that's the reason you have an agent, so I, work, I let him worry about all that stuff. So. Do you want an extension? Yeah, I love coaching him. Any update on Britton Brown? You think he'll practice Britton will today? practice this week. You know, we'll see how he is. He was close on Saturday, but we're not going to put him in a um, in a harmful situation. So we'll see how he progresses. I know he really wants to play. He really wanted to play on Saturday. Um, but we'll see how that, how that goes. But, you know, I, I wouldn't put anything past Britt. He's, he's a very, very tough individual. So. Talking about the defense being disruptive and getting tackles for loss and everything, uh, Michigude. Seemed mm -hmm. like he was really disruptive, probably most disruptive he's been 
couple weeks at least. What do you think of his performance? Yeah, overall? I thought, you know, a couple guys, Mitch and Otito up front and Bo, um, really we thought played their best games maybe to date this this season. Um, and then in the back end, you know, Q Lake and Jay Sean, I thought Cam Brown played, I mean, uh, Cam Johnson played really, really well on the back end for So I think it was a combination. Um, again, when you play team defense, it's, you know, if we're, we're close to our receivers and really good in coverage and can disrupt the timing of their routes, then sometimes it lets the rush get home in time. And then, and then other times the rush gets home um, a little bit before, so it helps, the, it helps the back end in terms of coverage. But um, I thought Mitch did a really nice job of disrupting things up front. Obviously, I think the numbers showed, you know, in terms of what his numbers turned out in that game. But uh, um, he's another guy that it, I still think is continuing to improve. You know, he's, we, we had a shortened COVID year, with him, which was his first year here, um, and then this season. So I, I think each week he gets a little bit better and a little bit better. So I'm, I'm excited about the trajectory he's headed on. Zach Charbonnet went over a thousand uh, yards for the season. Can you just talk about the way he's kind of progressed throughout the season, and especially kind of having the impact he's had in his first season? With yeah, Bruce? you know, at first it starts with his work ethic. You know, it's um, he's an amazingly consistent human being in terms of his approach every single day. Um, you know, you've never, we've only seen one, and it's it's full speed ahead. You know, he's he's extremely coachable. Um, you never really have to, you don't have to correct him more than once. You know, he. And he gets it, um, and then never does makes the same mistake twice. But um, he, he gets stronger as games go along. Um, I think he's stronger now at, the, at, at this point in time during the season than at any point in time. Um, but it goes back to his work. I think his work ethic is, is just kind of off the charts, and um, he's getting out of it exactly what he puts into it, and what he's putting into it is, is a ton. Uh, and we're starting to see that production. You know, we've seen it, but with him, we've seen it all year long. There's just been a consistent approach with him, and it's uh, it's really fun to coach guys like that. You got a few players who were nominated for Pac-12 honors this week, um, and the votes and the results will come out later today. But Kaz was uh, nominated for special teams player, mm -hmm. but obviously he played a bigger role than just special teams. Talk about his sure. performance Saturday. Yeah, you know, obviously as he continues to develop, um, he's a threat. You know, he, he's he's fifth in the country in on kickoff returns, um, and obviously was a deep threat for us on Saturday. We felt like. We, we had a couple things conceptually that we could get over the top on them, um, and he did um, and got home with it. Um, but he practiced a lot at running back last week because with Britt being down, um, you know, we didn't, we, our depth behind um, Zach was going to be tested a little bit. And so he got a lot more reps back at running back last week than he did at receiver. Um, for him to come out and do that, you know, it was just, we had a couple play calls that we had in. We felt like if we had him um, isolated in the slot uh, once, we beat him, you know, beat him over the top. Uh, on the first touchdown, and then the other time, uh, we were in a bunch of formation, and, and uh, you know he did a real good job running a spray post over the top of everybody and, and outrunning everybody. But um, he's such a weapon um, with everything he does, is he, and he's another guy that continues to grow, and every week gets better and better and better. So um, it's really happy for him because of what he's put in, um, and you know when he started to see it, you know show up with that performance in Saturday, three touchdowns, you know over. Uh, 200 all-purpose shorts. Pretty, pretty impressive. Got any plans for the UCLA Gonzaga game tomorrow night? That's I don't even didn't even know they were playing tomorrow night. Too, really, so. the, the Final Four rematch in Vegas on Tuesday? Not gonna have a team watch party or anything? That's the first I even knew about it. <laughs> we're in a submarine, my friend. Mm. <laughs> so right. we, we're getting ready for Cal, and um, if Mick's playing, I'll text him. I think he's. They have, do they play tonight too? Yeah. yeah. Who are they playing, playing tonight? Bellarmine. Bellarmine. Mm -hmm. And then Gonzaga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. back to back. Back to back, Where, they, they, that's not home, right? No, they're both in Vegas. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll have to hit make up. I'll, I'll, I'll text him. We we were texting after the game on Saturday, so I'll uh, I'll hit make up, see where he is. But we haven't made any plans for any watch parties or anything like that. So okay. I watched he, the last Gonzaga game in person, so I don't yeah. think I'll be able to get to this one. So. <laughs> he was texting you after the USC win. Yeah, Nick almost was. all of our coaches were. So uh, I think when you beat the team across town, everybody kind of gets excited about it. So to hear from him and Adam Wright and John Savage and Corey Close and um, you know, the coaches here are pretty close. And, and whenever any of our teams play their team, you know, that's, that's a big deal for the coaches here. So they were all as pleased as I am when they get an opportunity to play with those guys and, and beat them. So. Has the bell changed hands? Is it in your possession I don't, now? Or? I don't even I have no yeah. idea. We have the bell. Do we have the bell? I don't know where the bell is. Yeah, we painted it today. I never, I, I, absent on that one. I don't know where it is. We don't get to see it as much as everybody else. So. Are you going to get to see it get painted? Are you going to show up for that? I don't even know. When, no. they, when do they paint it? We're doing it today. Okay. <laughs> During the basketball game? 
No, we're going to do it today. Because I'm going to be at the Gonzaga watch party. What's that? I'll make sure everyone here gets a video. We'll get, we'll get the video of it. I, we got some work to do. We, we have Cal. So our focus is 100% on that. Uh, I'm playing Cal, and if you, you want to know anything about Cal, just watch what they did in the Stanford game. Man, it, was, it was impressive, you know, especially for what Justin's group's been through. You know, they had the game the week before suspended against um, or postponed against um, USC because of the COVID outbreak on their team, and they hadn't practiced well. But to come out, it was a really impressive performance of 600 plus yards offense and like 350 rushing. So um, you know, that's got our sole focus and attention right now. So that's really what our mindset's been on since the game on Saturday. All right, thanks, coach. All right, thanks.